Yes, I'm Osmo Suomen. Hello again. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the Finnish National Bibliography Fennica uh, as linked data. So, uh, so basically, this is the mission that I'm trying to accomplish here. That I'm trying to make our national bibliography a, a bit more webbish, uh, but not too webbish. So, just the right amount. And uh, I'm still not sure how long it will take, but it's. Uh, there's been some progress since last year, so I'm going to present that. Uh, so why are we doing this? Uh, well, first of all, we want to make our data, our metadata, more visible also internationally, because right now it's locked down in silos, basically. And, uh, and in order for libraries to stay relevant um, in the web-based world, I think it's important for them to share what they have. Uh, and of course, also to uh, this is a great exercise for finding out problems with, with the quality of data and, uh, and an opportunity to make it more interoperable with the rest of the world. And, uh, and we're also sort of, as an institution, trying to prepare for the future because it, uh, well, I was, yeah, it was pointed out yesterday that it's 15 years since, since Mark uh, was sort of um, yeah, Mark must die again, but, but it still hasn't died, but eventually there will be something else, and I think uh, this is sort of exercising, uh, trying to, to, to find out what, what the issues are with the current data and how to move it to some, some other uh, more modern model. And of course, why not do this? Because, yeah, we're here. <laughs> uh, so, so this is basically what uh, we started with. This is our snowflake. I don't know if you can see it there in the background. But uh, we had, uh, in, in the national bibliography, which is mostly about, about books, serials, ebooks, maps, uh, uh, we have one million bibliographic records. So this is our main bibliographic database, but we have several others. For example, we have a separate database for music. So, so that's not included here. And we have, um, including, uh, we have some authority records, so we have person names and corporate names, and then we have subject records. And, and these are all, all marked records. But we, we want to turn this in, in, into a graph, something like this, to, to, uh, to find out the main entities there, the works, places, organizations, subjects, persons. Uh, but in order to do this, it's, it's not a straightforward mapping, as you probably know. So you basically need to blow up all the mark records and, uh, and <laughs> then reassemble all the bits and pieces uh, into something that looks a bit like this um, marshmallow and toothpick structure. So, you, so you build a graph out of the pieces that you uh, get from the mark records. Um, but how to do this, uh, what, what sort of, what's the best approach uh, to find out? We had to do some research. and. Uh, that sort of culminated in, in last, my last year's talk at SWIB. Some of you might remember this uh, diagram and um, picture with the silos. So uh, I a, gave a talk called From Mark Silos to Link Data Silos, and then did a follow-up webinar with DCMI, and then finally a journal article. But basically, the, the point was just to, to uh, review all the different approaches that had been used in, in different libraries to to make their uh, bibliographic metadata, uh, put, make it into linked data. And it turned out that everybody is basically doing it differently. And yeah, but we tried to learn, uh, learn from that. And, and uh, sort of, since we're not uh, exactly the, the first ones to do this, so it was possible to learn from the others. And, and, and basically, we found out that for our purposes, uh, schema.org would be a good model because it's sort of um, allows us to describe our resources from a common sense for web users perspective. Uh, so it, it means, that, but we still wanted to do it in, in sort of a bit more advanced than just converting on one record at a time. So we wanted to do, uh, separate out the works from the instances in the sense of bib frame. So, um, and it's possible to do that with the bibliographic extensions of schema. And, but it means that we're not converting every detail. It's, it's, in a sense, we get a metadata haircut for free because we're just, at least at the moment, we're trying to find out what are the main entities, but, but, but uh, some of their, uh, some of their um, attributes or fields are, are still not converted. And we got some help from Richard Wallace in, in, in planning this. 
But, but how to get from, from the mark to the linked data? So we need something like a black box that, where you can put in mark and then you get out linked data. Uh, um, and I looked at the alternatives for, uh, there, there are various tools for doing this, but none of them seemed just right for our purposes. Uh, there were some, some, but there were some interesting approaches and, uh, and, and good tools that sort of got you uh, part of the way, but not, not all the way. So, so um, uh, we decided to, to, to build this pipeline for conversion that sort of stitches together existing tools uh, uh, as much as possible and then sort of glues them together and, and, and uh, then adds the missing, missing parts. And uh, we started from a, a dump of our uh, database. Um, it's an Aleph, um, Aleph system. So uh, the easiest way was to start with an Aleph uh, sequence. It's, it's basically a textual format for mo uh, marked records. So one million records in the form of an Alex sequence. Uh, and then convert uh, them using a tool called Kathmandu, which is like a Swiss army knife for metadata into mark XML and also do some, some fixes there on, uh, at the same time. And then from mark XML, we could use the, the Library of Congress mark to bib frame 2 converter. We started with the, 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 the earlier one, the mark to bib frame, but then switched to this one as soon as it was released. So, so we get uh, uh, in, in basically two steps we already get to bib frame RDF, but it's, it's um, it's pretty verbose and it's not really linked uh, anywhere, even within the data set. So, so there's a lot of internal duplication in there and uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't have the URIs for the, uh, for the things that are referenced that we would like there. But anyway, uh, from there, uh, we could use, start using RDF uh, technologies. So um, I made this monster Sparkle query to turn this bib frame into schema, a basic schema without any external links yet. Um, and uh, so we have, have it in a, in a basic schema uh, format. And then another uh, sparkle to, to uh, connect that with external uh, vocabularies and um, uh, like resources. So some of them were our own, like the subjects and the corporate names, but we also linked to the uh, RDA, media, content, and carrier vocabularies. Uh, because we're already using RDA in our marked records, so it was just getting the right URIs um, into the RDF version. Uh, and then, uh, but the problem is that uh, within there, there's still a lot of internal duplications. So for example, one record becomes at least one work. And, and that doesn't seem right because often you have many editions of the same work or you have a print and an ebook or something. And to bring these together, uh, I had to uh, create some work keys um, that try to uh, connect the works that, I mean, the, the, the work entities that actually re represent the same intellectual work. And, uh, and then to merge, merge these into, into the same entity, again, using Sparkle mostly. But then we still have um, a problem with the, with the persons because, um, well, many of, our per, many of the sort of the important authors uh, are um, listed in the person names authority and we could use their identifiers, but some are not. And there's a big long tail of, of people mentioned in the mark records, but we, which we don't have identifiers for. And it's, um, when, when you merge the works, you also get sort of many duplicates of the same person. And, and to merge these, we also created keys for them and try to deduplicate some of them. But it's difficult because um, you can't be sure that if, if, we, if you just have a name and the same name is mentioned in many marked records, but you, with, with, without any authority control, you can't be sure whether it's the same person or not. So we have to be a bit careful there and sort of err on the safe side, which means that we have a duplicate. Uh, we have some duplicates there still. Anyway, then the result we can put in an RDF store. Uh, and from there on, we can then publish it. So we have uh, this, <laughs> a lot of systems working together uh, to, to uh, make this available for humans and machines. So first of all, we have, um, uh, uh, we have this um, 
uh, triple store uh, based on Fuseki, with a, which provides a Sparkle endpoint. And then uh, uh, an, uh, a small application that makes this available also as, as web pages and the link data and, uh, and open search API. Uh, and then also we provide the same data as, as downloads. And, and one of the download formats is HDT, which is very convenient for uh, uh, publishing this uh, sort of a static data set uh, in a compressed uh, RDF file. And we can also serve that using a linked data fragment server. So it's, it's an alternative to using the Sparkle endpoint when you want to do complex queries that might otherwise bring down the Sparkle endpoint. You can uh, move some of the processing over to the client side using linked data fragments. OK, um, so, um, so this is the publishing. I'm going to show a little demo of this. Um, bear with me. So um, this is, um, okay, make it a little bigger. Uh, so, so, so this is how it looks on the web. Of course, I mean, the main point is the data, not the user interface. This is just for, for um, taking a look at, I mean, getting familiar with the data. But this is Ayan um, Lyhut Historia. This is a trans Finnish translation of Stephen Hawking's work, A Brief History of Time. And up here we have the, the, the work uh, um, attributes, so what it's about, who is the author, and so on. And then down here we have uh, several instances. So the first edition in Finnish was published, published in 1988, but then we have several other uh, editions published later, and the last one is an e-book in 2012. Um, and these have all been brought together into sort of uh, that they are instances of the same work, uh, uh, which wasn't, of course, the case in Mark because every, each one of them was a separate Mark record. Um, uh, but we can also, I mean, this is not very user friendly and it doesn't have any holdings information. For, so for somebody using this uh, and, um, who wants to know more, we can also go to Finna, which is uh, the main discovery interface uh, for um, all kinds of cultural heritage, uh, and which has more information based. This is just uh, this is not linked data, but but it, it provides access to the holdings information, for example. So so it's it's sort of linked to to the more user friendly but less linked uh, uh, UI. <laughs> okay. Or then we can look at, uh, but, but this is browsable. We can, we can, all of these are links because this is linked data. So we can go and look at Stephen Hawking uh, and we can see what he has authored, what he has contributed to and works about uh, Stephen Hawking. So everything here is sort of linked together and, and browsable. Uh, it's very different from, from Finna because Finna, the main interface is just a search box. So I don't know if this qualifies as a spelunking UI. Maybe not because it, yeah, it doesn't have all those nice visualizations, but anyway, it's, the point is not to search, even though there is a search box to get started. Uh, and also, this work is a translation, so it's linked to the original work, A Brief History of Time. And if there were other translations, they would also be shown here. And we can also look at the subjects here. So this one is about, for example, black holes. So black holes are cool. Okay, there is some information about the subject itself. This is the, the SCOS um, information. But when we scroll down, we find all the works about black holes. So, so this way you can also browse by subject. This is also different. I mean, in Finna you would have to search for the subject. Maybe not so different, but anyway, it's, it's you know. Uh, and we can take any of these, like this one, aspects of, of quantum fields and strings. This is maybe a thesis or something. And again, we get the, get the instances. Uh, but this is all data, so we get links to, to uh, other representations. So for example, we can look at this in JSON-LD. And I mean, you probably can't see it, but the URL ends with .json. So this is, I mean, and at the same time, we, uh, in the same way, we can look at RDF XML here. So that's all, it's all uh, uh, provided. And the, the, the data is embedded, uh, can't see it, but it's somewhere here. It's embedded within the page so that uh, as a script tag. So a search engine could pick it up from there as well. 
And we can, yeah, there is a basic search box, which is also provided as uh, open search. So we can search for Mark Twain and find out, well, we have a few duplicates of, of Mar the person Mark Twain, and then we have some works about him. So we can look at what, <coughs> what we have about him in, in this database. Okay. Getting back to my, my presentation. This is also available as, as downloadable dumps. So these are hairballs. If you want to do something more interesting, just go and pick it up from there if you like. Uh, and there are also the mark records are also provided there. So, so if you want to look at that instead, it's possible. And uh, yeah, I already mentioned we have a linked data fragment server, just very experimental, but it was easy to set up. So, so it's, it's possible to use that. Uh, this is the, the full data model uh, currently. So you can see there's not that many attributes in here. The main point is to get the entities right. Uh, and the main, main classes here are uh, work and instance. Uh, and then there are some relationships between them. Um, uh, and this is basically just this, the same division as in BibFrame. And, and then we have person, organization, publication event, place, and then we have the concepts that are the subjects. Uh, yeah, and then we have some series. And there's a full documentation there if, you, if you're interested in the form of tables. Uh, some of the challenges here in this, doing this, uh, first of all, the works, work extraction is really hard to do properly. I mean, in, in principle, it's like this, that you you extract the works using some kind of work keys from the mark records. And then uh, this, this will never be right uh, because the metadata is always um, a little messy and there are problems with all the records, for example, or missing information about uh, original works. Um, so you have to, probably you would have to eventually make a work authority to actually have stable uh, identities for those works. Uh, and then start using it and maintaining it for, uh, for the purposes of cataloging. Uh, this is what I would hope to do eventually, but currently we're at step one and, and it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's hard to find the resources and uh, the, the motivation to do this. Although, I mean, some libraries like the Swedish National Library and, and also in Norway and, and Germany, I know there are projects around this, doing, doing this. So, yeah. I hope eventually you would get some kind of use for this, but, but it seems like a big investment to, to, to get started. So it's not, a f not so easy to do in practice. Uh, then the linking. This is, I mean, the blue blob there in the middle is basically this bibliographic data set, and the yellow boxes are the things that we currently link to. So the subjects are linked to the Library of Congress subject headings, uh, places are linked to the Finnish place name registry and uh, Wikidata currently. We're still working on, on the Wikidata mapping, but it's uh, pretty far along. Uh, so this could be thought of, in terms of the stars linked data or the data uh, stars, maybe we're at four stars now because there's no really links for the works and the instances, which are the core entities. But we could, uh, I mean, potentially link, uh, for example, the persons could be linked to ISNI and VIAF. And the works could be linked to WorldCat works, or for example, the Libris Excel system, uh, which is um, coming in Sweden very soon. They use, use the, the BibFrame uh, approach for works, so we could link to their works, or we could link the instances to WorldCat and, or to other national libraries, for example, using ISBNs and, uh, as, as uh, keys for the linking. Yeah, so, so these are some just <laughs> potential ideas for linking. Uh, then there's the problem with, with persistence of identifiers, because uh, uh, the data is still being maintained as marked records, and the conversion is um, done in a way that we can do it all over again uh, tomorrow. Uh, but, and it's stable as long as the data is unchanged, but there are lots of things that have to be given identifiers, not just the records themselves, but entities extracted from the records. So, um, uh, so uh, and if the records change, for example, two records get merged together or 
somebody adds a new uh, contributor information or something, then it's often the identifiers in the result also change. So it's like trying to build a castle on sand that sort of it keeps moving and, and it's hard to, to maintain the persistence. So this is something that I don't really have a good solution for. Uh, of course, one way would be uh, is to push back those identifiers into the mark records themselves so that they would be maintained in the same place as, as the data itself. This would help, but you can't do that in all cases, I think. There are some facilities for doing this, like the zero, uh, subfield zero and subfield, uh, subfield one, but it doesn't work for all cases. Uh, this is uh, open data. We could look at it from a fair perspective. Uh, uh, is it findable? Yes. Well, we use URIs. We have rich metadata. Is it accessible? We provide several ways of accessing it. Uh, is it interoperable? Well, we use RDF, which is a standard, and we use Schema, which is a standard, a little bit of RDAU. Uh, it's CC0 licensed, and, uh, and we use this, uh, entities that are also used in other uh, databases. So in, we hope to, that it's, it's somewhat reusable, at least. Um, what, what to do next? Well, first of all, want to en continue enriching and cleaning the RDF data. Um, for example, maps are now just creative works, but they could be schema maps. Um, and to add more links to other linked data sets, like I already said, and then to expand this, the same uh, idea to other data sets, for example, the, the uh, music discography Viola and the uh, article database Arta. Uh, it happens to be the 100 year anniversary of uh, uh, Finland today. Uh, so this is also my birthday present. Uh, <laughs> we have this, this logo everywhere right now. Like you see it on, the, when you buy milk or something, it's all, it's everywhere. Okay, but this was my present. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Osma. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for, for this talk. This was very nice to see. And, and for me, uh, although it's not uh, very important for, for you, it's the user interface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found it. I found it quite nice, uh, especially uh, you, you could see all these are links, and for people like, like us, it's clear that, that this is linked data. But I think many users, they don't know what linked data are. And, um, and I think basically you, you, have an, uh, you have something from it that this is linked data, but do you tell the users that this is linked data, or do you ask them anything? Well, I guess, first of all, we have to know who is the user here. And uh, it's a new service, so right now we don't have any. I mean, you could be, but uh, um, it says linked data service right at the top. So uh, yeah, in that way, it's telling that this is linked data. Um, but I don't know, what else could we do to, to make the point clearer if you have ideas? then. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, yeah. <laughs> uh, one question which came to my mind is, um, you have some, you have to do a lot of cleanup work uh, with uh, the works and uh, the deed application. Uh, do you consider uh, um, opening an opportunity for users to take to take part in this work, a kind of crowdsourcing approach. So let's check if this three Mark Twain's are the same person or not. Um, is uh, anything such as a consideration to to open this kind of work up? Uh, that's that, that's a good question, and uh, we haven't considered that approach. I think 
Uh, I think the challenge is sort of relating the data here, which is the sort of the end result of a pretty long chain of, of, of operations, and trying to relate that back to uh, the original data. So, um, well, in the case of Mark Twain, it would be actually fairly simple. It, what it would mean is that the original Mark records, uh, uh, they should be enhanced with the person identifier, which was missing, and that's why those duplicates were created. So, um, but um, but this is also something that we are sort of doing internally. So, uh, uh, having those identifiers there in the mark records is actually a very new thing. It, they haven't been there for like two months, maybe. Um, so, uh, before opening up that into crowdsourcing, I think we first have to see what we can do internally. Like, we still haven't picked all the low-hanging fruit in, in that area. We're just getting started. So, um, but yeah, uh, that, that's a good idea and, and we will think about it. Uh, yeah, if you were to... Osma. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you were to run the conversion again tomorrow, what kind of hurdle would that be? How, so how are these different pieces uh, connected to each other, each other? Or is there a one script that you can use or, or how does it work? Uh, I can easily run it uh, any time. Uh, the full conversion takes about five hours and then the loading to the triple store and, and generating all the downloads and stuff, that, that takes one, one more hour, so maybe about six hours. Uh, and the result should be the same if, if the records have not changed. So, uh, so all the links will be generated the same way and um, all the URIs should be the same. And uh, 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 Did that answer the question or? Uh, so just a webby question. Mm -hmm. So with BitFrame, there's the activity pattern, and in the in your schema, you use sh shortcut properties. Was that a deliberate decision when you could have used actions, schema actions, or could you say a little bit more about that decision? Yeah, I would say we just took the the, the easiest approach, and uh, in this case, this was the direct path, uh, sort of direct property, so, and of, also it's because the. Um, in the data there is, uh, for example, those roles, uh, who is a translator and who is an illustrator, those are only available in some of the records and not all of them. Uh, I mean, it doesn't prevent you from using the more advanced pattern, but it just makes it less useful, I think. I think we could do some of that with, uh, with sub-properties that we could say, for example, that this person is not only a contributor, but also an uh, um, illustrator or translator and assert those both properties, and then, uh, yeah. Okay, hello, Esmo, thanks for the presentation. Uh, when you're linking, when you, you would be linking the mark records or blown up mark records to other databases, let's say to other national libraries to find the, the similar items, would you in, inject the links back to the original mark records? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that would make sense. I haven't really thought that far, but um, I, I, right now there is uh, basically all the data is coming from somewhere there. This, the, this system itself, well, it has a few triples about this data set, but other than that, everything comes from, from a data source. And I think for those links, they would, we would have to decide where to put them. And uh, it would probably make sense to put them in the mark records rather than somewhere else. Uh, thank you, Asma. It's very nice to follow your work. Um, I've got a question about um, if you're planning to um, integrate more kinds of uh, relations between your works, uh, like aggregations or works that are based on other works, or um, that kind of um, links in your mark record. Yes, I would hope to do that, but I haven't really looked very deeply at what would be possible based on based on the, the records we have, because of course it has to be, 
I mean, we have to get the information from somewhere. So, so I, I mainly concentrated, uh, in terms of work-to-work -work relations, I mainly concentrated on the translation relationship because it seemed to be the, by far the most common that was in the records and it's also sort of interesting from a, also from a user perspective and uh, from, uh, I mean, being a national library of a small country where uh, a lot of the literature is a translation of something else. Thank you so much, Asma, for these insights. I think it's very inspiring how you use the BibFrame core classes to um, group the things and, and then uh, use uh, schema.org to um, comply to the search engines. Um, I think this should um, really increase the interoperability of the data, considering that data models are harder to overcome uh, than individual properties that can be mapped. And um, was that something you did deliberately to um, to um, um, be able to align to other data sets likely to come up in BibFrame, or is it just because it fitted your the the structure you wanted to achieve? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say those two options are contradictory, but um, I think it's what's more about that we uh, sort of saw the problems of duplication when you have a large number of marked records which are basically about the same work, and especially when it comes to uh, when you have uh, start to have lots of electronic versions or digitized versions of of, of the same. Um, uh, same work. It, it, so, so we we have sort of more and more of these uh, uh, marked records that are disconnected, even though they are about the same thing. So it seemed to um, be useful to do something in this area, and rather than chose just a flat model that maps one marked record to one uh, entity in the in the RDF, uh, to do something a little bit more advanced with works and the sort of the big. Uh, also, the available tools, of course, affected so uh, this decision. So, having the BibFrame converter uh, available uh, from the Library of Congress and seeing how it seems to to give you at least a starting point for doing this this um, uh, grouping uh, or clustering by by work, it, it sort of seemed like a good idea to 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 try to apply here. Okay, one last question before we go into the coffee break. Um, thank you for your talk. And um, I'm wondering, um, it's a very nice data set, I think. Um, do you have any idea who will be your users? Or are you planning to do any kind of marketing for special user groups to take advantage of that data? Uh, well, yes, this is um, actually, this is part of a larger um, larger opening of our data. So, so the, the data, uh, in addition to, to this linked data set, we, are, uh, we have created a, um, a data catalog. Uh, because we already provide lots of uh, many, many open APIs uh, uh, in, into, in, in, in more traditional APIs usually. And, but they were all sort of uh, not very well documented and, and, and sort of uh, uh, hidden in, in, in specific systems and uh, so uh, we wanted to to uh, oh, we were also encouraged by the by the ministries and so on that want to put see our data uh, put out in the open so we created this data catalog that tries to document all, all the data sets and all the apis we have and this is uh, one of them or actually several of them because there are many apis available for the same data set uh, so and we are trying to uh, but we haven't yet really. I mean, this was the official launch in a way for the linked data set, and we will uh, we will announce the the, the open data um, uh, service um, sometime next week, and and try to to um, organize uh, also maybe some some event uh, around it to make it more known to developers. So so yes, we are trying to get some publicity for this. Okay, thanks again, Osma. Thanks.